So uh, that leads immediately into Brian Lawler versus BG James. Gentlemen, oh. the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have my favorite uh, moment, but go ahead. Why don't you just recap it? All right. So uh, they're brawling on the floor, which was the story of the second half of the show. Yes. In the middle of the fight, <laughs> Brian Lawler climbs the announce desk, takes the house mic, and asks all the fans if anyone has seen April. <laughs> yeah. Uh, BG James grabs him. He tries to do a backdrop on the floor. It turned into a dead eye. The uh, oh over the my back pile god! Driver. Oh my god! I don't know what they were trying, dude. He lifted him up, and it didn't look like he was trying to do a backdrop. It no. looked like he lifted him up and maybe was going to do an Alabama slam. Yes. But he lost his balance and fell backwards, and and Brian Lawler landed on his fucking face and neck on the cement. I thought for sure this guy was done and the ref runs over to check on him and he's just he's grabbing the back of his head ah but then he goes right back into character and he starts doing all these wacky faces and everything like that and he just gets right back in the ring and they keep going i don't know how this guy survived it was amazing yes so they're in this match and uh james goes to the pump handle slam brian uh, lawler avoids it and hits a super kick and uh, it's funny because brian lawler was not a great technical wrestler, but did he not have the best super kick in the entire world? It looked that was really good. awesome. So he goes up top for whatever, but then out comes six pack and April. <laughs> and you'll recall okay. a few weeks back, six pack said, if you beat me, maybe I'll let you watch. Mm -hmm. I laughed my ass off <laughs> because Lawler goes up top for the hip hop drop and he's standing on the top rope. Out comes. Six Pac and April, okay? Six Pac grabs her, and they start having sexual intercourse <laughs> right there on the stage. I they are just, he's eating her face. He's <laughs> grabbing her ass. I mean, they're, they're going all the way there on the stage because it's TNA, you see. Mm. And they cut back. And Brian Lawler is standing on the top rope, and he's doing he's doing his Brian Lawler face. He can't believe his eyes. His eyes are wide. Ah! And I'm not sure if like he was supposed to be crotched, but uh, he doesn't get crotched. He just stands there, and they keep having sex, and he keeps watching them. And now, like Xbox, I mean, he's you know. He's he's pretty deep in there, and uh, me. <laughs> and this guy's still standing on the fucking top rope, and I don't know if it was a rib or if somebody forgot or whatever. It was a rib, but right. finally, finally, he's like, I just got to crotch myself, and he just jumps and crotches himself on the top rope and falls into the ring. I died at this whole preposterous fucking segment and his selling of being crotched 
Ah! I, mean, I can't even do it, dude. I can't do it. You got to go watch this show. <laughs> Not go watch me. Brian Lawler's performance in this match. He's so over it. He doesn't care. Fuck me, dude. I was dying during this segment. This was a highlight of the show by miles. <laughs> it did not occur to me that BG had me forgotten the spot and Lawler had to improvise that. Dude, I and thought... the best part is, like, th- when, he, when he's doing the face on the top rope, they do, like, a shot like you're watching right now in video. It's just, like, from here. He's going, ah! And then, right when he has to crotch himself, they cut to the fucking hard cam. So you see the guy in the top rope and he goes, Oh, and jumps and crotches himself and falls off. The fucking perfect, the perfect angle to show you that he did it on per- I would, Oh, God. Yeah, he didn't swing his arms. He didn't try to catch his balance. No, no. he just, no, he just dove. crotched himself. <laughs> See, I, I saw it as he was like, he forgot where he was, was taking a step towards the stage and crotched himself on the top rope. But now. They should have told the story that he was up there and just thought, I will never have sex with this woman again. I don't need these nuts. I'll just jump on the top rope with them. So, as I was starting to say, <laughs> Colin back. says it's almost DDP in the machine from Thunder. Almost. 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 DDP in the machine was a thousand times funnier, if that's even yes. possible. Because, beyond, well, for many reasons. Ah! Yes, the machine had the scream. Yes. Machine screaming and was a big part of it. And he fucking tried to do a coast to coast crotching. <laughs> he jumped three quarters of the way across the that's fucking true. ring and crotched the top rope. So Six Pack said, uh, if you beat me in the match, maybe I'll let you watch me bang your girlfriend. And it turns out he is a man of his word. Yes. He probably brought her and banged her in front of Lawler. What a gentleman. Yeah. So uh, there's, a, um, there's a moment in that match when um, Lawler is whipped into the uh, railing. And as most guys do, they just run into it and they go over it. Lawler ran towards it, <laughs> stopped, literally stopped right in front of it. And then dropped to his knees and then went into it. <laughs> I laughed so hard. It's like everything he did in this match, everything he did, it was just amazing. He was amazing in this match. Hmm. He yes. was a cartoon. I wouldn't say amazing. Yes, he was. When a, when a living man is an animated cartoon, that's amazing. I don't care what hmm. you say. So all these assholes are laughing at this poor heartbroken guy. <laughs> including us <laughs> just, just had his guts ripped out and stomped in front of the entire world he's weeping and he has he, I mentioned Sonny Siaki has one facial expression for everything Brian Lawler has 800 expressions for crying yeah <laughs> and uh, eventually he goes to the back of poor he bastard. literally had his bottom lip out and it was quivering yes he was like he was bawling it was oh my gosh it was amazing so over the top so this leads to uh, six pack versus AJ Styles Six pack cuts a promo. It is a disgrace, he says. The shits! What an X Division title match isn't a DQ. So this is no DQ, but he warns Mortimer Plumtree if you get involved, you'll get your ass whipped. Every promo that X Pac cut, he just came off as the most sincere, <laughs> friendly guy. Even when he's apologizing for, for uh you know what happened? Didn't he apologize for what happened with April? I forget what he said. Uh, later, yes. Later, later he did, yeah. yeah. After the but match. it was actually it was actually this promo where like he comes out and the people were like booing him, and I can't figure out why. And uh, I guess maybe it was because he you know did that to April or anything. But anyway, he goes, uh, yeah, you can boo me, you know, whatever. And then he explains that uh, you know this is horrible. Like uh, we had a great match and it was just a DQ and you paid good money for a finish. It's bullshit to not get a finish. And I'm like, God damn, he's right. And so he uh, he offered to do it again. No DQ. No DQ. And he warns Mortimer Plumtree not to get involved. So this match, the actual wrestling involved, was awesome. Yeah, because X-Pac is such a great worker. Yes. Yep. And what's funny is, like, I was reading the, uh, the uh, board, and, you know, people were like, I think it was some, some people in the chat, too. You know, they... They watched and they went, my God, I never realized what a great worker X-Pac was. And I was like, did he really not show much when he was in WWF there at the end? Because this fucking guy is great. Now, granted, he wasn't able to do matches like this because they had a very specific way of, of you know, doing matches and such. But, you know, the first time I ever saw him was in Global. They have great matches with Jerry Lynn. Mm-hmm. And then, God damn, he was so great with AJ Styles. Last week and this week, he was great. Now, to put that in context... According to Dave, uh, Six Pac dislocated his hip 
early mm. in this match. You know and what? Gutted out. You know what? I saw that spot. It was uh, it was when he got thrown crotch first into the post because he mm. took it and he fell on the ground. And I remember he he like he sold it weird. Mm. And I was like, did he fucking hurt his hip? And I just uh, in early in the show, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Lynn had talked about how he broke his pelvis or whatever. He had a cracked pelvis for six weeks or whatever he said. So it was really weird that Xbox sold like that. Well, it turns out he did. Yeah. That sucks. And then he did the rest of this match. Yeah. Which was still an awesome match. Yes. So uh, he hits the X-Factor, but Mortimer pulls the ref out of the ring. So six-pack goes after Mortimer. AJ ends up accidentally, ex- accidentally hitting Mortimer, knocking him off the apron. AJ goes to the Styles Clash. Six-pack gets the ropes. But then Brian Lawler runs down, breaks a glasses in the overpack's head. And AJ hits the clash and wins. And even then, I was like, okay, it's an ODQ match. And uh, this guy, is a, I understand why he's mad at Six Pack. So it's a fuck finish, but there's a reason for it. But then Six Pack gets up. And he raises AJ's hand. Yes. You were the better man, he says, when you had that other guy hit me with a glass bottle. And then AJ don't care. AJ behind his back passes the belt to Lawler. Lawler uses the belt to hit a Six Pack. And uh, that's all very, very wacky and kind of stupid. But the wrestling itself was so great, I don't even care. Well, I'm foolishly expecting a follow-up. <laughs> this was completely different than the first match. The first match was just spot, 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 spot. And I think I said it last week, and it rings true this week. There was time to breathe in between the moves, and it made the match better. A Steel versus Jorge Estrada. <laughs> So for those of you who wonder, the Flying Elvis storyline is, is just dead now. Uh, they, they, they no, they, they, they said on commentary he's still looking for another Elvis. I, I, I should, uh, you're right, I misspoke. Yeah. The feud between Sonny Siaki and the Elvises is dead now. Sonny has moved on, the Elvises have moved on, there is no blow-off, there is no payoff, it's just done. So Ace comes out. I had forgotten that he's uh, managed by Mortimer Plumtree right now. Mortimer did not come out with him. So they're out there doing stuff, and uh, they're working outside, and Priscilla... Uh, Jorge's valet gets in Ace's face, and so Ace throws her down. What a dick! I thought, Man, what an asshole! I shouldn't do that. Even the announcer's like, "You never do that to a woman." He shouldn't, by the way, do that to a woman. And then they get in the ring, and suddenly Ace is making a comeback. Yeah, he's supposed to be the baby face. I, I was, is he? Yes, <laughs> he was in this match. And then Priscilla, who had been thrown down, by the way, tripped him up, leading to Jorge getting the pin. And then Mortimer comes out. He's punching and slamming Priscilla too. I don't know what the fuck's going on. This was that match that there was way too much going on, and they kept going 100 miles an hour, and it wasn't getting better. This match sucked. It was beating a woman for no reason. That too. And they announced uh, that whole contest last week, uh, how they're going to do this worldwide search, and then apparently they did that over the week. They found Priscilla. Actually, they introduced her last week. She was on. She was in the Battle Royal on episode one. Huh. Anyway. 